if you train all this time to be 10% stronger, 20% stronger, and then all of a sudden you're just 20% weaker. It works on your, your core and your obliques, but also the hip flexor to get you up there. Anytime you're, you're just kind of bent in the wrist like this, it's gonna be much harder to sort of pull through and maintain force the way that you'd like to. I love the, the two shoes, of course. That's the only yep. way to send, yep. right? <clears throat> Nice opposition. Ooh, okay. I take it all back. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever possible, you want things to be perpendicular to the part of the grip that you're using. You want to be pulling like straight through the hold. Um, and so anytime you find yourself sort of rocking up and having your foot come parallel to the hold, everything's just getting somewhat less engaged and you're having to sort of like clamp and pull harder. There's a lot of subtlety to that, of course. Like there are times where you have to comp uh, create compression to pull along things or you'll do like a side toe. But even then it's like, it's just coming up with more elaborate ways to create kind of that force into the holds but always you should be trying as much as possible to be perpendicular to to the edge if you train all this time to be 10 percent stronger 20 percent stronger and then all of a sudden you're just 20 percent weaker like it's much much faster to turn your heel out or like kind of set a little bit higher than to go and get way stronger just cock that knee out and let it kind of like smash straight into the wall and that would definitely just keep him on here so I, I believe he's going for that blue one up there. It's kind of hard to see, oh boy, but blue. yeah. Yep. But so that yep. might even be an Open interesting. Open up that knee. <laughs> see that? Yeah, because what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. To shift across like this, you want this heel to be turned this way. Also on volumes in general, you definitely just want your heels down. And so every sort of other little subtlety aside, it blows the second his heel comes up. Unless you're quite flexible, as your knee goes across, hips goes across, body goes across, your heel's going to rise just because you only have so much uh, range of motion. And so you typically want a little more kind of heel like this way, which is just going to let you translate across with your foot down like this the whole time. If you have to go across your foot, it's just going to come up as you go across it. Basically, right heel out and keep it down and left heel in um, and that by itself would be enough. All this stuff is like fairly small angle changes, substantially reduce the normal force, which is what produces the friction, which is what keeps you on the wall. It's really important that you manage to get as much of a component of that as possible going into the usable surface of the hold. All right, so I have to show this one because of the foot, um, because it just terrifies me and I don't oh. know that I would be willing to do this <laughs> Especially because it looks like... Look how like, he's turned here, too. Like, I guess and it's at least to you're falling. Like, yeah. No, but like... Uh, <laughs> and okay, finally, he's safer now. It gets out. Like, <laughs> how attached to your knees are you? In both yeah. the figurative and literal sense. Yeah, that's actually where I kind of like those, those mountain climber exercises. If you want to do some core strengthening, like with a band resistance at the feet, mm -hmm. because it works on your, your core and your obliques, but also the hip flexor to get you up there. If you can only raise your foot kind of this far, if you can then tilt your hips a little bit as well, you're going to get more kind of core compression and a higher high step. For very brief adaptations, you can frequently do like a little like a, like resist, 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 and it'll buy you like a solid, you know, sort of four or five inches transiently. But uh, in cases like this, super useful. Open in the hips. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. He's doing a really good job of like, again, keeping the hips open, keeping mm -hmm. the induction and the pressure on everything. Yeah, this is actually a classic problem that I run into. Um, when you straighten your leg, it's going to push you as if you're doing a squat. You end up throwing your body out from the wall because you haven't rocked over the foot quite enough. The easiest, quickest thing you can do is just make sure to drive your hips and knee further over the foothold. And a lot of times it's just a matter of a few inches. It's not super hard to do, just kind of play with it and feel it out. So it does end up being kind of the same issue on both moves. Because she doesn't rock all the way over the foot, she gets blasted off of the wall here. So if she could get all the way over this, she'd be able to stand up and get nicely into that hold. Long term, it's useful to sort of build flexibility and sort of deep squat range of motion through either like archer squats or deep box squats, or something like that. Um, pistol squats are always good, but they are just a little bit more removed from how you, I think you engage climbing. Good pace, good precision. Foot probably shouldn't have picked, but got it back on really nicely. It's kind of interesting, ooh, yeah. yeah. His actual like foot engagement maybe leaves a little bit to be desired, but um, the like aggression and precision is really nice. 
who typically anytime you see a, a foot like threshing away from the hold you're going towards, that's your body trying to create momentum to keep things like sort of oriented. Um, and it can work, but it's like typically not quite what you're going for. Like the, the, the accidental reverse moon kick <laughs> is, um, is typically a sign that like something's a little bit off. Not a big deal since it's a jug, but you just wanna keep these things clean. Boom, really nice back leg there, really nice balance. In a number of cases, especially when you're dealing with opposition, and in this case, a side pull, it becomes easier and more reliable if you sort of do this like kind of J thing. So you're gonna go kind of like left and then back. Because you can't really down pull on this, it's like the up force is coming basically from the heel mm -hmm. and a little bit of push from the right foot to whatever extent's possible. So in order to get additional up, it's gotta come from this foot. For it to come from this foot, you have to get over this thing so that you're able to squat essentially. And to do that, you need to pull this way. Up and over. That'll slingshot you over there and you can just like dunk that jug. The sun is setting, it's a whimsical night. <laughs> Sends yep. are strong. Fingers Imagine are like feeling a, good. Like a little Lion King soundtrack, you know? <laughs> yeah, nice rock over, good. I mean, you can actually like <laughs> I like the mobility the engagement here. through everything here. Keeps the yeah. hips really close to the wall. Yeah. I wonder to what extent a little bit of trepidation starts to come into play here. Right, it just looks yeah. like a bit of hesitation. Yeah. yeah. She's fine, it's not that far. I just have seen enough people jack up enough ankles and things that stresses me out. So, watch your pad cracks, people. The way this move goes, it looks uncomfortable. I mean, not so much in the body position, but like the way she kind of like hesitates and thinks and thinks and hesitates. That makes me think that it's a combination of the body position not feeling solid and possibly a little bit of unease being up off the ground. Um, but you can see that as she goes, the left foot is the first thing to go, right? So it's like she pushes with the leg to try to get her up and over, when instead what should probably be happening is spread the legs and start to kind of like elevate a little bit while maintaining that pressure. When you're sort of dropped, you can extend like this and kind of just get like your line elevating vertically. But if your toe's pointed, in some cases, it's gonna cue you more to do like this, which she kind of does here. See how like as she straightens it, it just kind of like disengages and blows off. A little bit of a fear of falling and sort of like lack of commitment to the move. Um, and a little bit she's mostly driving through the left leg rather than keeping these things like pinned and starting to extend off of the right leg to get taller. So this is of a particularly weak climber. Uh huh. So <laughs> you can check out his uh, his YouTube channel for evidence of. This is how the the Hoover's Beta Mule and... Abrahamson beef starts. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really control your momentum so much, which means that if you're not strong enough, you won't catch the hold with a bent arm, making it hard to hold even the jug due to the rotation. What cuts your ability to cross is the width of your chest. Right? So it's like if I'm here and trying to like reach through, life's gonna be really hard. And so really what he's trying to do with this sort of pull is get a little bit of height, but it's essentially a horizontal rail. So a little bit of height and then clear room for his shoulders to come through. And so what you'd wanna be seeing ideally is like as much of this as possible. After a while, I could get the jug, I could get several fingers in it, but the thing was the rotation that I had kept spitting me off. I couldn't get any pulling power from my right arm. And so I couldn't really get the jug with the right momentum. So before he even lets go with the hand in this case, right? Like he's yeah. still hand on the wall when he's like perpendicular. And then the second he takes the hand off, the uh, left knee comes through, causes that little like helicopter. Yeah, so he's, he's like in a chin up staring yeah. at that hold. Yeah, so he's in that also, slightly biomechanically advantaged position. The thing that was different was that I thought it was more about one arm pull up power, but apparently it's much more about your back engagement as well as your finger strength. Look at that line. It's like, I mean, crap drawing on my part, but pretty straight through the wrist to elbow, you know? And with Emil here, look at like how sort of like chack, chack. Mm. Anytime you're, you're just kind of bent in the wrist like this, it's gonna be much harder to sort of pull through and maintain force the way that you'd like to. That said, sort of different finger links and different physiologies line up with specific holds differently. So there's not always much to do about it. I think with just 5% more power than I had this day, the second move would just feel easy almost. But because I lacked those last bits of power, the move was just basically undoable. He's got this like really aggressive arch, which gets him into this like really nice, really strong uh, like row position. You get momentum going, it kind of whips his feet around, whop. The better you are at doing a big rotation on something like the Beastmaker 20mm crimp, the higher your likelihood of doing this campus move will be. There was very little one arm pull up strength involved because of this. If you were to make this hold much better, I think there's no chance he doesn't do it, right? Like if that was, even if it wasn't like a jug, if it was just like a flat ledge, like 
zero chance he doesn't do that move. So while worse holds change the body mechanic and engagement and strength needs overall, if you can do it on a bigger hold and you can't do it on a smaller hold, it to a meaningful extent is finger strength. I can do several one armors consecutively, but I wasn't, it didn't give me anything on the boulder because I didn't have enough finger strength to pull on the hold. I think that he is likely substantially correct in that assessment. And as always, of course, thank you to Dan. If, if you want to get some personalized information and obviously climb a lot better, he is available for coaching and that information will be available in the description.